<clears throat> we are the Frack Stack Wireline Sensor Capstone Team. I'm the project manager, Rodney Wilson. Ale Soir. David Burtz. Trenton Tucker. Omar Gonzalez. Johnny Eckley. And our project advisor for this capstone was Meyer. A quick overview of our project is for this presentation, we will be going into the introduction, followed up with the background, theoretical background, then going into the design along with the modeling and simulations, followed up with the implementation, testing your results, task and timeline, and then ending this presentation in budget and resources, earned value analysis, risk management, and impact assessment. And of course, ending with a conclusion. A quick introduction into our project is Meyer came to us with the problem that every day in the oil field operation area is happening. Operation area is happening by an operator going up to close a switch, which he gets to call over radio. And sometimes, but not every time, he will close the wrong switch. When he closes the wrong switch, a shear ram valve is activated, as you can see on the arrow on the bottom. And in the shear ram valve, which is hooked up to a frack stack, it will sometimes crush a pipe or cut a wire line. When this happens, they lose the wire line and the well is destroyed. So to prevent this, a sensor is going to be made to detect this wire line. And the team has come up with a solution of electromagnetic field sensor that we have designed for this project. The sensor will be in place at the top of a frack stack, as you can see on the top arrow. And this is where a wire line will be inserted into the frack stack to get the best sense. As a general scope, we need this, our sensor will run off of 24 volts. It detects a wire line and it also is able to be incorporated into a five inch to 13 five cents uh, flanges. Uh, for the background, uh, there is two patterns, the one in the left and the one in the right. For the one in the left is the downhole tool sensor. This pattern uses electromagnetic field energy to detect the medium and the drill side and uh, senses the different properties of the fluid passing through the drill site, like what we are using for our sensor and what we're aiming for. It's also wirelessly relay the data to the operator to be used in the operation. This pattern is different than our sensor because it's been used for uh, in a well, but ours used be, uh, has been used in a frack stack. The patent in the right, the second patent, is is a sensor within a pipe coupler. This sensor utilizes the four magnet, magnetic body and senses the sensor to detect the abnormality within the well. For us, abnormality will be sand, oil, and wire line. The sensor also used to check the integrity of the pipe as it pulls out of the well. This patent is different because uh, it's for detecting the abnormality and ours is for detecting the wire line. Theoretical background for the theory using magnetic field to detect the wire line inside the spool. And the equation used is the magnetic field strength. We're having I for current, uh, mu for permeability, and D for distance from the wire. And we, in the right, you can see the field strength and the calculation for it. Uh, to continue the theoretical background, uh, we have the uh, ohm low uh, for total resistance and resistor needed in the series. We're using the 14 gauge copper wire. And you can see in the, uh, in the small graph, uh, the 24 volt and the co coil connected in series with the resistance. Uh, shown on the left is the main design components that our sensor is going to consist of. Uh, some of the main ones being the spool, the coil, the outer casing, nuts and bolts. Some of the smaller components are going to be the general wiring components, such as a fuse and a resistor, uh, as well as the rubber insulator and a gasket. Uh, this is the design the team has formulated to detect the wire line. The team sensor is going to be fully external to frack stack spool and leaves enough clearance for the nuts and bolts to be easily removed from the flanges. The coil itself is going to be a three inch long doubled up coil made of 14 gauge magnetic copper wire. A five ohm resistor and a five amp fuse are going to be wired in series with the coil to limit the current to four amps and help prevent overloading the circuit. 
when the wire line is present in the frac stack, there's going to be an increase in the output voltage of the coil because the metallic objects that are going to be present inside of the wire line are going to increase the strength of the magnetic field. Myers PLC is going to detect this slight change in voltage and alert the operator that there is wire line present in the frac stack on the PLC. <clears throat> uh, shown below is the final design with dimensions. It's important to note that all of these dimensions are in inches. Uh, as you can see, the, uh, the outer casing is, uh, is inside of the middle of the frac stack spool, and it's fully external. Uh, the outer casing itself is designed like a clamshell, so it can easily be assembled and disassembled by four nuts and bolts. Uh, inside of this outer casing, there is a place for the input and output of the 24 volt DC current. Uh, contained inside of this casing is, of course, the coil, the 5 ohm resistor, and the 5 amp fuse, as well as some other general wiring components. Uh, in order to keep this casing watertight, there is going to be a gasket around all of the edges. And uh, when that clamshell is tightened down against the spool, that gasket will squish up against the, uh, the sides of the spool to help keep it watertight. Uh, when, de when designing this sensor, uh, some of the associated standards the team had to take into account was for the sensor itself that it had to meet UL hazardous certification, class one division two environment, which is a standard for most frac stack parts. The coil and other electrical components had to meet national electric code NFPA 70, which is a general code for most wiring components and circuits. The outer housing material had to meet UNF1, UNF4, which is a standard for non-ferrous materials inside of an outdoor environment. Modeling and simulations. Here on the left, you'll see that we used a software known as Electrodynamic Applet by Java. This software allowed us to enter the parameters at which we had calculated and come up with for our coil and input them in to demonstrate our magnetic field that is within the coil and around it. Overall, we were able to edit everything to its exact specifications and show the diagram to the left. To further the model and simulations, we have a multi-sim diagram here. Here we are able to insert a coreless coil within multi-sim and put the number of wraps, which our coil would be, which is 127 wraps, and run four amps through this with a five ohm resistor all in series running into the coil itself. Now we are able to hook up a voltmeter to show that our voltage change, which would be our magnetic field. Now, since multi-sim doesn't read magnetic field, this is why we use voltage to demonstrate that because as the wire is inserted into our coil, the voltage will increase, thus changing the voltage, demonstrating our magnetic field. So for our team to design and create a sensor that will be able to detect a wire line inside of a frac stack, we come up with the idea of using an electromagnetic field to detect the wire line and our sensor will be connected to a 24 volt power supply. And the power supply will be connected to 14 gauge magnetic copper wire that, will, that is wrapped around our, our metal spool and encased with an aluminum sheet. So based on the diameter of the frac stack, if needed, you can apply more wraps to the coil that will increase the strength of the electromagnetic field. For the final product, the sensor uses an electromagnetic field to detect the wire line and is it apply, and it's applied to the top of the frac stack so there's no interference with any fluids coming into or out of the frac stack. And the sensor is able to detect wireline inside of the frac. For testing, we've tested the travel of magnetic field through the metal. As you can see on the far right picture, we have two copper coils connected to an oscilloscope and a, a DC power supply. As you can see on the oscilloscope on the picture to the left, it is reading the sound running through the pipe, which means there's an electromagnetic field running within the pipe. We've also tested the voltage and amps needed for the coil design, and we tested the strength of the magnetic field needed to be able to detect the wire line inside of the pipe. For the results, we have an input voltage of 24 volts. We have a limiting current of four amps. Our resistor is one ohm, 
the total resistance of the circuit is six ohms and the resistor needed for the circuit is about five ohms. For the magnetic field strength, we've got 0.739 Teslas. Here's our task and timeline for the project. Our project plan started off with initiation, planning, execution, and termination phases. Underneath all these phases were tasks that we inserted to help us have a successful project. On the right, you can see the Gantt chart, which shows the task and how they fall in line with each other. The Gantt chart was used to see which task would overlay and how the project would flow. Overall, the project flowed great and we were able to have a successful uh, project. At the bottom, you can see the timeline, but this is what we used throughout the project to help us periodically. This will show us where we were at and how we were doing and what progress we were making. Here we have the budget. So for an overall budget, we had a plan cost of $50,000. That was material costing $2,000 and labor costing $48,000. When it came down to it, we had an actual cost of $49,000. We were able to save $1,000 on material through sourcing uh, material through Meyer, and our labor was remained $48,000. Our hourly wage was $25 per hour per team member. Now this resulted in individual weekly costs of $250 per team member. For the team weekly cost, we had a $1,500 overall cost. This resulted in a team cost of $48,000 throughout the duration of the project. Here we have our earned value analysis. The gray line demonstrates our plan cost, which was $50,000. But as you can see, our actual cost in orange was $49,000, coming just below budget, which is great. Now, the exponential line you see at the bottom, that is our earned value. And as you can see, we started out without much of an earned value, well below what we had actually spent. But as we resulted into the execution and termination phase of the project, we we're able to demonstrate that we had earned a value greater than what our actual cost was. We have identified several risks associated with this project. We have identified the reputational risk as once the sensor is assembled, that it unexpectedly fails, which would look bad on both the company Meyer and our capstone group. We have identified the structural corrosion of the sensor and coil itself, as well as the magnetization of the pipe itself, as if the pipe is magnetized, the wire line that is going through the pipe will stick to the side and not go down into the well. The technical risk associated with this project are that the coil is not strong enough to produce a magnetic field inside of the pipe itself. We need a magnetic field that is strong enough to pierce the steel pipe and stay within the pipe. Also in the frack process, many fluids, water, frack fluids are reused and they pick up metal shavings while they go. And there's a possibility that the sensor picks up the metal shavings, causing a false positive. Over to the right, you can see our quantitative risk analysis that we associated with these sensors with the likelihood as the y-axis and the impact as the x-axis. The green, green square showing low likelihood and low impact as the yellow show moderate likelihood, moderate impact and as the red shows high likelihood and a high impact. The, we also identified two risks that are more on the, the Meyer side of the project, the strategy risk of price comparison to similar sensors, as well as the external risk of legal risk as impending on other people's patents. Impact assessment, um, the global impact associated with this is prevents loss of well and land. So when the wire line, when the shear valve is cut, and the wire line is cut and drops to the bottom of the well, that well is shut down until they can fish that wire line out of the well, which will cause pr pretty much waste of land and waste of a well. The benefit to society is that it encourages investment into oil field technologies. Ethical considerations are that the design for the sensor meets all standards for materials and code, as well as the sensor benefits the party using it, the people that Meyer sell it. Economic impact, It'll save millions of dollars for oil companies as it'll cause wells not to be shut down and out of use for many weeks to months. It'll also create and save jobs in the oil field. Health and safety and environmental impacts associated with the project are that it'll keep workers out of the red zone or also known in the oil field as the danger zone, kind of where anything could go wrong 
frack could go wrong, blue things start flying, just danger zone. As well as the sensor meets the health and standards, meets meets all health and standards as we don't want the electromagnetic field throwing off anybody's insulin pump or any sort of heart device they have, anything associated with that. In conclusion, due to the current events that have been going on around the world with schools being shut down, Meyer and the team have agreed to a scope change. Instead of presenting a full prototype, we have presented a electromagnetic field sensor design and simulations, as well as some calculations that go along and support it. Meyer will now take over this design and manufacture this and incorporate it into the oil field. And after talking with Meyer, all expectations have been met, all criteria has been met, and it from here on out, it is their job to take over. For acknowledgements from our team, the team would like to thank and show appreciation to the following. Meyer Company, Jack Esparza, John Gonzalez, and the team UCC Engineering Department. And here's our references for our PowerPoint. Thank you.